insert inferior product here. Instead, I've got a better idea. Yesterday, on Atheism TV, I saw an ad for... Insert your product name here. And as you know... Insert your company name here. Have done good products. You have a product or service to sell? You want to popularize your website or YouTube channel? Atheism TV lets you reach thousands of people. Advertise with us today. No atheists in foxholes? Better rethink that. On March 31st, something very significant will occur in the United States. It is called Rock Beyond Relief. It will be the first ever event of this type to take place on a military base. It will celebrate free thought, atheism, humanism, and skepticism. The chief organizer, Sergeant Justin Griffith, felt the need for equal time back in September when evangelical celebration Rock the Fort took place. The event, sponsored by Billy Graham, went so far as to set up an altar for soldiers who were willing to affirm their belief on the spot. This month's party should be quite a success as approximately 5,000 people are expected to attend and celebrate Rock Beyond Relief. Sergeant Griffith says it will probably be the first step in a new direction away from the evangelical proselytizing that has permeated the military for decades. At first, his idea was met with resistance. There were stacks of paperwork to file and plenty of hoops to jump through in order to make Rock Beyond Belief happen. But the celebration will finally take place on March 31st. Those in attendance will enjoy a day of music and public speaking from luminaries such as David Silverman, Nate Phelps, Dan Barker, and renowned biologist and prominent atheist Richard Dawkins. Rock Beyond Belief is open to the public and all are welcome to attend. Coptic Pope's death caused a stampede resulting in three dead and over 50 injured. On Sunday, March 18th, the thousands of mourners gathered to pay their final respects to 88-year-old Pope Shenouda III at the Coptic Cathedral in Cairo. Pope Shenouda, who was born Nazir Gayed Rufail, became the 117th Coptic Pope in 1971. He died on March 17th of complications from diabetes. Lines of mourners stretched over one kilometer in Cairo's Abbasia district as followers saw a final glimpse of their deceased patriarch. Inside the cathedral, the Pope could be viewed sitting on a ceremonial throne dressed in gold and red vestments and holding a scepter as believers walked by. Barriers put in place by police to control the swelling crowd were soon overwhelmed by the eager masses and the stampede that followed claimed the lives of three people and injured 52 others. This tragedy puts a sad and ironic twist on the legacy of Pope Shenouda, who will be remembered as someone who strived to bring unity to his religion and to be a beacon of tolerance and dialogue. President Obama was quoted as saying, His commitment to Egypt's national unity is also a testament to what can be accomplished when people of all religions and creeds work together. The selection process to replace the popular Pope begins when 150 Coptic church officials will gather and vote on an acting patriarch. A permanent replacement is selected later on. Pope Shenouda III was interred at the Wadi El Natron Monastery in northwest Cairo where he had spent years in exile as a youth. The American Family Association forgot that a sword has two edges. Right-wing Christians often say that they are the majority and should therefore be allowed to have their way whenever it suits them. However, the fact that a sword has two edges is a principle that the American Family Association does not seem to be able to understand. It all started when the opulent Life Church tried to set up shop in downtown Holly Springs, Mississippi, but were told by city officials that it needed approval from 60% of the people in that part of town before it could move there. During the American Family Association's One News Now show, the host complained that it was hard to understand why his church was being discriminated against, why the city had harassed it in this way. He went on to say, they are the only ones who get to have this stupid majority vote thing going on. If you don't like the way we do things, get out. Last week, Rick Santorum spent some time visiting various Louisiana churches, among them the Greenwell Springs Baptist Church. What was particularly interesting was not what the presidential candidate said, but what Dennis Terry, the church pastor, had to say. Instead of quoting him as we usually do in our newscasts, we will let Terry speak for himself today because there's no way we would want to be accused of twisting his words. I'm tired of people telling us as Christians that we can't voice our beliefs or we can't no longer pray in public. I'm, listen to me. If you don't li love America and you don't like the way we do things, I got one thing to say. <laughs> Get out! A 
Rick Santorum spokesman later said there was nothing wrong with Terry's speech and therefore no need for the GOP candidate to distance himself from someone who was dressing a crowd, not the nation. However, we will leave it up to you, our viewers, to decide if the pastor was asking the people of his church to leave.